Hi, this is Guest, and welcome back, and welcome back to some more Call of Duty World War II. Like I said in my last video, I was aiming or going to be able to play the beta a little bit more in my in the second weekend of it, as I wasn't working quite so much, and I did manage to play it, rank up a little bit more, and unlock some new weapons. And one of those new weapons that I unlocked was this absolute beast of an SMG. Boasting nearly a 1200 RPM rate of fire, it absolutely shreds people in close quarters. Nothing can compete with you if your aim is mildly okay. Although that said, you do kind of need to use the grip on this weapon, as it does have some of the highest side-to-side -side recoil I've ever seen in any weapon. So you have to be a pretty darn good or pretty accurate with your shots to actually make sure that you get a few kills, because it will just flick all over the place. I suppose the other better option would be just to stick steady aim and just hit fire this beast all day. It could do really well. Also, on top of that, I am running the, I think it was Requisition perk, which meant basically it gives you hard lines so you earn your streaks a little bit faster, and I was only running the low streaks. Now, the reason I was only running the low streaks was, to be fair, I don't feel the high streaks really do anything in this game. I got the airborne, or the airborne troopers a few times in the game i'm not sure exactly that's what the name of the streak is but i got the, the high streak a couple times and each time i called them in they got like a couple kills and i'm like well why have i spent ages playing sort of a little bit more defensively because let's be fair my ability at call of duty has somewhat lacked in my four years of absence i can't really run around to do as well as i once was probably down to my uh, old age and my reactions going to pot actually i'm not really old age i'm 29 i'm not that old <laughs> but my reactions aren't what they once were and i'm not able to run around and do as well as I once once did in the Call of Duty world. Also, bear in mind, during the beta, you're obviously going to get the keener players playing, and it's not going to be your sort of the more casual environment, which I do tend to flourish a little bit more in Call of Duty, and you're able to pick up some dirty streaks and do really well in the game, because unlike some other people who are a much, much better players than me, for a main example, uh, iTemp, he is absolutely insane at Call of Duty still, and will just uh, dominate anyone he plays against, or it seems to anyway. And I'm just not on that level. I can't beat those great players of Call of Duty. You see, I mean, there saw a lot of people in the beta jump shotting and drop shotting. I can't even remember how to drop shot. Well, that's not true. I can remember how to drop shot. I just, uh, it's completely sort of out of my fathom to do it. I just don't do it really anymore. And I think I probably lose quite a few gunfights because of my lack of knowledge or lack of time playing Call of Duty over the last few years. And that really does sort of shine through when you sort of play against some of these players that were in the beta who are a lot more competent at it and have been playing the game a little bit more frequently than I have. So that was another reason that I've been running the lower streaks is because I'm more likely to circle through them a lot more. As you notice, when I started out this game, I captured the home flag, I captured the B flag, and I got two kills with the frag grenade, and I nearly had all three of my streaks. Also included with me getting those streaks quite quickly, I'm obviously picking up a couple kills with each one of them, which is about what I'm usually picking up with the airborne troopers, and I'm also circling back to my UAV, so I then know where everyone is again. It makes it a lot more easier, I, a lot more easier, a lot easier, and I kind of feel you can be a lot more aggressive with it, because you're not sort of trying to play for these high streaks, and I just find it a lot more fun to play with it that way. And if, like, I needed more reason to use them than I already do, the animations for them are so much fun. I love the glide bomb. I've always loved the, like, the predator missiles that we've had in previous games, and the glide bomb's no different. I think it's a great animation being able to see the whole map, see where everyone is. You can also sort of call out if you're playing on a more competitive variant with your team. You can work out where they're then going to be spawning, so you can then move to that side of the map. I like the information you gain from it and the animation for it. And then you've got my favourite kill streak in the game, which was the fighter pilot. I don't know whether I'm slightly partial to the fact that I love the fighter pilot because I've always wanted to be a pilot, but I just think it's an epic little streak. The way you start out in your little formation, you dive to the ground, you get everyone lit up, and you can pick up a few kills. Yeah, I've only managed to pick up, you most of the time you only pick up one or two kills. I think I've got done it a couple times where they've got four kills, but as I said, it's getting you the, about the same amount of kills that you get from the airborne, and you get two or three of them in the time that you get one of the airborne troops. I just think it's a great streak, and that's half the reason that I run the low streaks. I think they're just a hell of a lot more fun, and you can play a lot more aggressive because you're not sort of worried that oh well, if I die here, I'm not going to get this. I've only got, I'm only sort of getting 500 points. As I said at the start of the game, it didn't take me long to rack up 500 points and get those streaks. Anyway, guys, uh, moving on to the actual topic for today. Now, although I say topic, it's more what I just titled this video as, and that is a new. Piece. PC and I've saved up a load of money and I decided to upgrade my PC. It was getting a little bit ancient. It was about six or seven years old and it was starting to show. In the render times of these videos, it was taking about an hour and a half to render out a very simple little video. If I hadn't put any color grade or anything on it at all, it was taking that sort of time. If I don't bother putting those things on, it was getting up to two or three hours to render each of these videos out. And then paired with like my uh, rather lacking internet, I was looking at nearly six hours to get a video out, which uh, was a little bit of a long time to have my computer not be able to be used at 
at all. And as on the side, I do quite a little bit of video editing to earn a little bit of extra money. If I'm rendering anything with sort of high quality footage, so a lot with my drones, they all shoot in 4K, trying to render that footage. Jeez, that took ages. So I thought, you know what? Let's actually put some money aside and get myself a new computer. I started out with buying a new monitor. I've got a gaming monitor now, so I've got 144 hertz monitor, which I have to say, it makes such a difference. I never really thought that it was going to make that much of a difference having over a 60 hertz monitor, but it really does. If, you can, if you've got a computer that's good enough to run more than a game at more than 60 frames, definitely invest in one of these monitors. It's so much nicer. The game, just everything just looks so much more fluid. But on top of this, I'd, uh, the computer I did originally have, I had an AMD FX6300 processor, and it wasn't a bad processor. About six, seven years ago, it was a fairly decent processor, but six or seven years down the line, it has got a little bit slow, and it has started to show its age quite considerably. On top of this, I had about 16 gig of RAM, a rather generic motherboard, and I had a GeForce 960 graphics card. And the graphics card wasn't bad, it was just, as everything, it was just showing its age, and it was getting a bit slower. So I decided it was about time to upgrade. I started with getting a new graphics card, and I got an Asus Strix 1066 gig card. Now, one thing I will take of note of this graphics card, if you do get it, and it is a beast of a graphics card for about 300 quid, it is frigging gigantic. It has three cooling fans on it, and the card is about 30 centimeters long. I actually had to rip the hard drive and part of the CD drive out of my really ancient case to be able to fit this card onto my motherboard. So that's something to bear in mind. You may need to invest in a new case as well, which is next on the list to do. And I'm debating whether to get it, uh, run it in SLI and get another one of them because who doesn't want more frames out of every game they play? On top of this, I also got the new processor and I got a Ryzen 7 1700X. Now I got the X because I didn't really want to play with the round with overclocking because my cooling isn't spectacular. So I thought it'd be best to get that. And to be fair, 3.4 gigahertz across eight cores is incredible. On PUBG, I run about sort of 90 plus frames and it only uses about 25% of the capacity of the, of the CPU, which is incredible. On top of this, I've also got 16 gig of RAM and I've got an Asus X370 Pro motherboard, which has some lovely RGB lighting on the back of it, which looks sweet. And with all of this, my render times have been cut down to under half an hour for doing a video with everything, all the trimmings on top of it, which is incredible. I am so happy with it. And if you do need a new processor, I would highly recommend the Ryzen 7s. Anyway, this video has come to a close. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you next time. Goodbye for now. Bye.